Chairperson, as we debate the basic education budget vote, we must remember that quality education is the most powerful tool to realize opportunity. It is a tool that children can use to end poverty and unemployment. Despite the circumstances of their birth, geography, race, or gender. But listening to Minister Muchecha this week has left me feeling like Alice in Wonderland. While South African learners cannot read for meaning, while they attend schools in unsafe environments without food, while they sit in overcrowded classrooms with overworked and underqualified teachers forced to teach a curriculum unresponsive to economic opportunity, the department seems to have no plans in place to turn the situation around to save this generation. They make many promises, but there's little actual impact on the ground. This is nothing new. During Mr. Minister Muchacha's first term, I was impressed by some of her reforms, a new curriculum, new text workbooks, and new assessments. But Minister, you indeed have run out of steam and ideas. The post results released on Tuesday are just but an example. One in five grade four children cannot read for meaning in any language. More than half of grade six children can't read for meaning when tested on grade four levels. These tests show that we have lost a decade of progress. You see, Minister, the thing is with surveys of achievements is that they don't care what you say you've done. They just measure what children actually know. And what they revealed was devastating. Minister, if children can't read, they are doomed before they even begin. The COVID-19 pandemic is not wholly to blame either. These devastating outcomes are of your own making. Your department closed schools for far too long and didn't have plans while they were shut. 75% of learners who attended no free schools lost 50 to 75% of their learning time in 2020, then 25% in 2021 because of your department. Even the Ministerial Advisory Committee, packed with experts, advised the DBE in July 2021 to send all learners back to school immediately. But this too was ignored and rotational timetables continued for another six months. Even when the DA took your department to court to end rotational schooling, you resorted to name calling and thought we were grandstanding. But in fact, we knew the devastating effects of your inaction. Most sensible countries have announced huge catch-up programs. Chile has detailed for a four-year plan not South Africa. Currently, there's no budgeted national catch-up plan, just talk. The DBE's drips and drabs are a disgrace. Talking about free websites and parachuting untrained unemployment youth in classrooms. A media investigation by Ground Data and Viewfinder refuted DBE's claims to Parliament about a national reading program and found that the program is nothing but a collection of random, uncoordinated activities by, the, by provincial education departments with no proper monitoring. In fact, the DA run Western Cape is the only province with a budgeted, implemented, and monitored reading plan, as well as their 1.2 billion back on track program to catch up learning losses. 111 million has been set aside for reading, specifically for Afrikaans and Isitosa schools. That is why the Western Cape has doubled the number of, of learners that can read compared to the rest of the country. How are learners meant to eventually participate in the labor market if they can't understand what they read, a basic skill? Last year, the Department of Higher Education Labor Market Intelligence Program identified a lack of reading comprehension as a number one skill deficit in the country's labor market. This is why 4.9 million young South Africans are unemployed. This is a national disaster, which will only get worse. Chairperson, the minister and the DG therefore must present a catch-up and reading plan to Parliament with a budget-specific timelines in this APP so they can be held accountable to stop the bloodbath of a generation of children who will, find, will be confined to a lifetime of poverty and unemployment. The ANC government is so dysfunctional and incompetent that it cannot even do the most simple things, building toilets, feeding children, or even keeping the lights on, let alone teaching children how to read. 29 years into our democracy, there are more than 5,000 schools with functional pit toilets and no credible plan this financial year to eradicate them. DBE has failed to meet every single ACD and safe target to eradicate pit toilets and other dangerous infrastructure in schools. And the goalposts have been shifted for the fourth time to 2025 now. 
When four-year-old Langalam Vicky's tragic date in the school spit toilet is raised, the minister simply refers to the police investigation. The fact that police are investigating the circumstances of her death does not minimize the dehumanizing facilities Langalam was forced to use while still alive. I personally did an oversight visit to a school. The toilets are horrendous. The minister would certainly not use them, nor should she allow her grandchildren to use them. But the learners at Langalam School are still subjected to those conditions to this day. Sadly, in the last decade, we have lost six children to pit toilets under your watch. Schools are not meant to be the graveyards that this ANC government has turned them into. That is why as the day we have launched an end school pit toilet campaign and we'll be approaching the courts to ensure that each pit toilet is eradicated in our schools. More than 5,800 schools still have unreliable water supply. 400 mud schools still exist. 900 schools still have asbestos roofs. Yet the Eastern Cape and Pumalanga departments retain 414 million meant to deal with unsafe infrastructure. This money was then given to provinces who can use it, like the Western Cape, who built a new school in 65 days. Yes, you heard me correctly, 65 days. While your department's infrastructure projects are delayed by an average of 27 months. Minister, it's high time your department looked at efficient models to quickly build schools of quality to eradicate dangerous infrastructure in schools. The National School Nutrition Program is, in our, and is another insult to injury that has been added. Learners in, at more than 10,000 schools in KZN and the Eastern Cape were forced to go hungry when the provincial departments failed to ensure provision of their daily meals. The KZN tender is now a subject of investigation. However, there's no indication that anyone will be held accountable for this travesty. And despite allegations that a family member of an official benefited to this tender, because with an ANC government, cadres must eat while children starve. Minister, an urgent audit of all these NSNP programs must be done to ensure that no other learners suffer the same fate. It is also high time that the department face the truth about metric results. A real metric pass rate of 54.6% is not good enough. Minister, your government's sole focus on quantity means nothing if quality and depth in education is out of the equation. Chairperson, the DA believes that education is a foundation of opportunity. Where we govern more children stay in school, school infrastructure is built and maintained, children eat twice a day, budget is provided for catch-up plan and reading, quality teaching is monitored, and no child is at risk of dying in a pit toilet because we don't have them. That is why parents move here looking for better schooling. So, Minister, instead of taking offense when you offer best practice to you, embrace it for the sake of the future of this country. So, who through the ANC's education system are confined to a lifetime of poverty and unemployment? It's called political maturity. Thank you. It is, however, time to vote this ANC government out. Thank you. I thank you, Chairperson.